Hello and welcome to another, I'm so tired, um, creating a compiler from scratch. We're going to try to do macro expansions on define. I, if we succeed, I don't know that we will this episode, then we can also start doing expansions on include files. And that is going to start to get a little complicated. We've got a couple of things to do beforehand. We need the concept of a translation unit to store things in. Um, I guess that could just go in the lexer, really. The Because um, macros and includes only exist at lex time. So I don't even think we need to do that. We can just do everything in the lexer, and by the time the lexer exits and gives us all of our tokens, we don't need macro definitions, and we definitely don't need includes. Because, I mean, where else is that going to go? Nowhere. So, interesting. Yeah, let's not even add that. We are going to have to add the concept of a macro definition and a stack of expansions, which means we're going to have to update our vector as well to act a bit more like a stack. We've got a push, but we're going to have to add a pop as well. Um, off screen, I added a couple of things for memory safety, like you know, freeing things because an address sanitizer was yelling at me. But... We need to go add more to a vector. Um, and I'm going to try to start doing uh, branches for each of these episodes. Like, okay, we're going to be doing git checkout. Be, we can say um, c slash preprocessor. I don't know. I don't know what I'd want to call the branches. c lexer uh, macro expansion. Just c macro expansion. Sure, let's try this out. Git checkout, see macro expansion. That's the branch we're gonna work on for this episode. It's gonna be good. I keep looking at this screen. I need to not keep looking at that screen. And we're good to go. So let's define a new struct. We're gonna do a lycc um, macro def and a macro expansion. I'm gonna have to look at how the standard handles macro expansions because recursive, or not even recursive, but macros in macros uh, is something I never fully understood the exact specification for, but that's fine. We'll figure it out later. We need a couple things in the lexer here. We need a vector of macro definitions for macro defs. We should be including util, but we're not. It should be included by maybe lexer. It looks like it is, but we're going to explicitly grab util here. Then we also need a vector of macro expansions. Macro expansions. So what we're going to be doing is as we encounter a vector, or as we encounter a macro, a define, we're going to be pushing things into this macro defs thing, and we can use that to look up macros as we hit them. And then for macro expansions, well, it'd be really cool if we have a hash hash table here, hey, huh? Macro expansions will be the same thing, but we're going to be treating it as a stack, and whenever we encounter a macro to expand. So then when we're expanding a macro, we can read through its list of tokens instead of getting new tokens. The trivial case should be trivial. The more complicated case, I'm not so sure about. We'll see what happens. So let's go ahead and define these structs. We're going to put a... Uh, let me put the keyword info like down here somewhere. So a macro def, struct macro def, doesn't have to be terribly complicated. We'll do a, um, I think at this point we need a lyacy str string view for the name of the macro. And we're probably going to want some string utility functions because of this. And then it's a vector of a couple of things. It's a vector of, we said um, lyacy string view, I think, for the params. The parameter names, and then we want a vector of lycc token for the body, and we also want a bool has params because you can have either a zero parameter ma a function like macro or just a regular macro with no parameters, and they're both going to have zero. So we need to flag it as special. So that's our macro definition. I don't think we need anything else. 
it probably wouldn't hurt to store the location of the macro, but we don't need to store the location. It'll be easy to add if we need it, so I'm not going to worry about it right now. Then we need a macro expansion, which is going to have a couple of things. We need a couple of couple of couple of things. I've never done this part, so I'm just kind of thinking here. We'll probably want to store a macro def pointer to the def that we're looking at. Uh, we'll want to keep a vector. Well, I think we can just say long, long expand index. If we just call it index, then we can say it starts at zero. And the next time we read a token, we get the first token from the body. And then we can check it for an additional expansion. Um, we might need more that we need the yeah we need the bound arguments that's what we need oh boy so that'll be another thing we've got to do is when we're so okay let me so if we have a define test as a b c and then we type test we're going to instantiate the macro test here as an expansion store the res the uh, the def to this define and set the index to zero so that we're right before a when we read next token we're going to hit a next token b next token c and then we can pop the extension the expansion from the stack and we're good to go but if this takes an argument like a and then we expand a we need to then do another expansion but that expansion is going to be on the argument list here so if we said uh, 10 comma for 10 20 30 as our thing here this is going to expand to 10 20 30 bc so we hit this first one and instead of returning a we need to then go deeper into the argument list and return 10 then 20 then 30 and then we can go to b and then c so it's entirely possible that we have incredibly recursive macros even without involving a second macro here. So, so there's our 10, 20, 30 BC. E, what happens if I put test in there? It should expect to a test 30, yeah, because it doesn't re-expand while it's doing this. It might if we're doing this. I don't think it will, no. But if we called something else and then called back, it would. So for as long as we're expanding just test, test will never re-expand. But if we're expanding test and then test two, this is going to be the problem. If I say define test two as test, and then we hit test two, this would be like an infinite recursion, I think. No, it's not, because we're still expanding test. OK. Interesting. Cool. Well, that's the part that I don't know. We have to learn a bit about the preprocessor to get this all to work right. Anyway, my point being, we could have an expansion for each argument where so we could have a definition expansion or an argument expansion maybe have two different kinds here so if i said type def enum lycc macro expansion kind then oh boy that was a lot of a lot of things i have not attempted this ever before by the way so, like I said, I started working on Elixir a while ago. This is farther than we've gotten ever before. Farther than I've gotten ever before. So I'm kind of winging this. I barely know what I'm doing. So we could have an expansion kind here that says, um, YSC C um, macro X macro x, mex, mac ex, macro expand uh, def, we're expanding a definition, or we're expanding um, an arg, for example. So then we could say kind. This might all have to change. And then if the kind is a def, we have these two. I'm going to avoid using a union, by the way. Don't yell at me to use a union here. I'm going to avoid doing it. So if it's a def, we have the def, and this is like def index. 
And then if it's an argument, we s might still want the argument. Okay, so actually, we're going to need this anyway. Let me let me try this without the kind. So we have the the body index into the def's body. But then we can also have long um long arg index and we'd need to know which argument we're expanding which i would also call arg index so instead of index i could say position body position arg index and arg position like this and then we could be like set to negative one when not expanding an argument. So whenever we trigger an expansion, we populate this, set the def, set the arg index to negative one. And then we start going through until we hit something that is a parameter. And then we say, hey, cool, we're going to set our arg index to the index of that parameter. And then we can start tracking the arg position until we hit the end set arg index back to negative one and continue back through the body. And then if we hit another macro, we're going to end up in a second expansion that, get pushed, that gets pushed onto the stack. Because we're never really going to be... I was about to say we're never going to be expanding multiple arguments at a time, are we? But what if I... I don't know if we can do this. We're going we're to see. If I define test as a, uh, b, and then we just say a, b, can I then test of 1b2 c? Just a bunch of characters here. Does it like this? Test, it's not going to expand b, which is good, I think. So it's only ever going to expand. OK, we're going to assume, yeah, we're going to assume that this will work, because it sounds like it'll work. So we have a def. We have an expansion. Let's go make a define here. I scrolled right to it. Let's go. So store macro definitions in a translation unit. So we're going to say ICC macro def def equals a thing. So we're going to have dot name equals to macro name dot has params equal to macro has params dot params equal to macro params and body macro body right and then I can vector push into lexer defs macro defs the def itself so that stores our macro definition for this translation unit and then we leave the preprocessor good very good that's probably huge in the camera I won't do that again um, then, 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 we are going to write a function somewhere up, probably below this function. We're going to need to look up static lycc macro def pointer lycc lexer lookup macro def lycc lexer lexer. Then what this is going to have to do is for long long i equals zero i is less than vector count of lexer macro defs i plus plus. We can then say, God damn, why is my nose itch? Stupid weather is making me all fucked up. Macro def def equals reference to address of whatever lexer macro defs sub i so that we can keep the pointer to it. Then we need to check the legacy string view macro name against something here. So let's just copy this whole goddamn, paste the whole goddamn there. We're going to start with macro name dot data um, def name data. And then we'll just do macro name dot length. So then the next thing we want to do real quick is if 
this does not equal to def name length, then we continue so that we don't do weird checks. If this returns correct, then we can just return, or you know, I did the same. We can return def, and then otherwise we return null. So then, if it's an identifier, already did that. Let's do something here. If it's an identifier, we can then say lycc macro def um, macro def equals lookup macro definition in the lexer of the out token text value string value. If macro def is not null, then we're going to do something here. Uh, otherwise, we're going to do this. I don't really like nesting all this much, but we're going to, for now, I guess we could just return. We'll just return from here. Then we can say, instead of returning this token, we need to return an expansion. So let's create an expansion for let's see, expansion macro expansion equals something. So we need to say dot def equals macro def dot arg index is negative one and everything else is zero. So we want a vector push into lexer expansions, a new macro expansion. And then we can return. But instead of just returning, I'm going to recursively call a read token. Lexer out token. Because now we want to hit this expansion up here. So before we even eat white space, we're going to say if vector count lexer expansions is not equal to zero. If we have expansions, and I'll even say greater than zero just to be a little bit more explicit. Um, not that it matters, because I think it's going to return. No, it will turn. It will. It should return a signed value, but just in case. Anyway, it, it's fine. So if we hit this, then we want to start returning things. So let's say out token. Let's grab the expansion first. Lycc macro expansion uh, expansion. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it macro expansion. We're gonna try to be a little consistent with our naming here, even though I'm usually bad at that. Get a reference to macro expansions um, sub vector count of macro expansions minus one. I would really like a vector back, I guess. If I get a reference to vector back yeah we can go do that real quick hold on let me just define vector back v is going to turn into v reference to v at vector count v minus one which isn't going to work very well on. So we can say vector count v is equal to 0, v, or um, hmm. for right now, I'm not going to think about that edge case, and we'll continue. Vector back. should give us a thing. OK, so then from here, we can say if macro expansion arg index is not equal to negative 1, then we're handling an argument thing. Otherwise, we're handling a body thing. So let's start with body first. So let's just do a nice old assert false 
unimplement. Not handling parameter or argument expansion just yet. Easy as. Then, 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 then. Then, then, then. We need to, I'm just making sure I remember what's going on here. Macro expansion dot body position. Long, long body position equals this. I'm just going to grab it. Then we want to out token equals macro expansion dot def dot body sub body position like this. Then we want to body position plus plus to go to the next thing. Then if body position is greater than or equal to vector count of the body, then we need to pop this. So now we want a vector pop of macro expansion just straight up of lex or macro expansions, I guess. Vector pop there. And at this point, no matter what, we return early. So then let's go implement vector pop in util.h. Vector pop, which I can put here instead. Vector pop, we'll put back here as well. Pop is going to be another statement like while zero. We're just going to say vector header count minus minus. If vector header count, then vector header count minus minus. I think. I think that'll give us pop for free. It's not complaining at least. So we can try this. We can see what happens. Let's go into our hello. I don't have high hopes for this, but I am not like, wow, it's going to break. If I say, uh, I don't know, block expands to this, then can we say int main block and get a thing? Build and give me a build and I hate typing for some reason. A hey, yo. Whoa. Did that just work? Yeah, it's at 115 and 116 are the location here. So if we come up here, that's 115, 116. Holy shit, we did it. Uh, we're gonna get pad dot get commit and C, um, set up base case for macro expansion. Git push. Um, git push. You, what did we call this branch already? I don't remember. Let me get status. Uh, git push you all C macro expansion. Okay, that exists. That's good. Then. Let me clear the screen because it's just annoying as heck. Wow. That's fantastic. I did not expect that to work so easy. So then let's try something else. Let's put the block back. Well, we can leave that there and we can do a second expansion here. So if I say void foo with a block in it, let's um, define var a as int a equal 10. So then I can just say var bar, and I can even remove this. So if I, if I do this now, it should crash with an assert. So first, let's make sure it didn't crash with an assert, because we didn't enter that case. But it did expand to int a equals 10. And then bar. Weird, hold on. So after this opening bracket, we have int a equals 10. And then we've got bar anyway. Uh, 
Oh, because it expanded var, duh. We get the opening and closing parentheses for var. So it didn't expand var, it expanded var. Of course it did. So then we have a semicolon. Okay. So that at least doesn't immediately break. Then um, here is another thing I remember from the standard. I'm going to open up this lexer file again because. Your password strength needs to be checked correctly. I was pretty sure I had something in here. Maybe I just read it. Let's see if it's in here somewhere. There are some things to look at when we do macros because Because, because, there's something to do with invoking a macro. Uh, invoking a macro does not require this to be immediately adjacent. So you can just call the next token. Then yeah, the uses of a macro with arguments can have spaces before the left parentheses. If the definition, yeah, the definition is where it matters. So my problem with this is, well, I guess it's not a problem, but still my problem. Uh, let me see, hold on. Does anywhere in here talk about, um, because if I don't include this, I believe that means it's a variable again. I remember reading that somewhere, I just don't remember where. I'll have to find it later. Uh, and we can we can just test this ourselves by going to um, back in hello C. If I said uh, var here, a instead, well, one, it doesn't know what var is. It's undefined. But um, right. So if I uh, one of the examples that they they showed off is if I declared uh, define baz, and then I had like a um, void baz, then interesting, that's a thing. So if I did this, no, I'd have to define baz afterward, that's what it is. If I said void baz, then we could have um, void baz equals f equals baz. Probably won't work at the top level here. I guess it does, right? You can see that we're referring to this, the function. But if I were to actually try to invoke it, then it turns into the macro, it goes blue, and it says, whoa. So I do need to be able to peek ahead to see what the next token is, but optionally not use that token, which is still going to be a pain. I'm pretty sure that's going to be a pain. What we're going to have to do here, right, so we're, hey, if the macro definition exists and is not, you know, whatever, I need to see if it has arguments, then attempt to find a opening parentheses. So what we probably want to do is, like, cache the lexer state and rewind if we don't see it. That sounds inefficient as hell, but we might have to do it. So if I were to say liacy lexer uh, lexer cache we could just cache the important fields that get modified but I'm going to do it this way and say lexer cache equals the value of lexer okay so then we can say read next token no preprocess into out token except we really don't want to read it into out token we want to read it into YCC token check token. Make sure it's zero in it. Read it into check token. Then we can say if we only need to to go forward though if macro def has if I could spell macro def got macro def has params. Do all of these checks here only if we have parameters first of all. Then we cache the lexer. Then we check the token. So if check token dot kind is not equal to uh, an open parentheses, then we want to 
revert the lexer state. Lexer equals lexer cache. And then we can go um, not a macro. Go to not a macro. Go to not a macro. So if it was a macro with parameters, but we aren't invoking it, we undo our undo our changes, and we go to here. If we are invoking it, then we continue. Um, I think regardless, we should reset the lexer state so that we can. Well, no because now we want to read all of those tokens and bind them to arguments. Ugh. Okay, so we need a list of list of... Because I think up here, I only said, hey, we want a expansion here. For the expansion, we're not even binding the arguments yet. So we need to have an argument list as well as a vector of those argument lists. So it's a vector of vectors. Right? Yeah. So vector vector um, args. And then the vector of vector of args needs to be liacy token. We're passing in tokens as our args here. So then down here, we need to define a vector of vector, vector, liacc, token, args is null. So then else, if it's not a parameter one, we can do this. Uh, and I think here we can do this regardless, because we're going to push a new expansion. So all the way up here, we want a new expansion with args, set to args. So now we've got to parse args here. And I wonder what happens then. If I were to just say vector with no close, and then do like a semicolon somewhere, I don't know. It's not going to like this regardless. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on there. But it's going to try to eat this, and it's going to be a vector of Laie macro expansion, right? So it's just not happy with me at all in this case. So if I move this all the way to the bottom so that there's nothing for it to consume, does it give me an error here? Like, it's telling me there's an error, but I don't think I'm ever going to know what it is. So that's scary. We'll have to figure out how we're going to do this. Because that could just hypothetically consume everything up to a comma, and even after a comma. That could consume the entire file until it has a closing parentheses, which in our case is probably here. right? If I put this back, I think hypothetically it's going to show up here. It looks like it's smart enough not to, maybe because it's on a separate line. If I did this, does it like it? It's going to expand vector push, which is going to turn into a bunch of things. And there's, right. But if I said, like, int a equals 10, is this a vector of int a equals 10? Can I do this? That should give us an error, but it's not. It's not even, like, expanding properly. I don't know what to do with the error handling on this one just yet. So we're going to do the trivial solution and figure it out from there. So we're already at an opening paren. So then what we want to do is say for, and again, we'll figure out what the exit conditions are here. We want to read uh, into, let's call it arg token, so that we can reuse it a bit more. I'm, I'm just going to do it manually so I don't have to think about it arg token read into arg token if arg token dot kind is equal to 
it really doesn't want to give me intelligence now, does it? If it's equal to uh, close, then we just break. We've done it. We've read a token. It is the close. We break. We're good. If it's not that, um, if is at end of file, we still aren't sure. Uh, at EOF, no suggestions. Yeah, it's really not happy with me. A lot. I see Lexer. Why isn't it happy with me? We're just in a for loop. If I come over here, I see C Lexer. Did I break? Hold on. We're gonna restart this. Give me Laie. Um, Laie. Really? No, it's still turning on, I guess. But there we go. Um, EOF. If we're at EOF, we're going to break. If we're not at EOF, we're going to read the next token. If we're here, we're going to break. If we are not, we need to keep doing some things. If we're at a comma, I guess, we can say, let's say um, current arg equals null. So if we're at one of these, then we can vector push args current arg. Then if we're at a comma, we continue. And we also push the current arg and make sure that current arg is null. I think we can just do that regardless so we don't accidentally touch it. Copy the current arg into args. Set it to null. If there's a comma, that's fine. If there's here, that's fine. Then if we hit end of file, this we definitely want to report as an error. As an error. So let's grab some error handling code. And we can say, um, expected in macro expansion um, argument list. How about that? So then instead of start location, we can just use the most recent location. So we can say ICC location, IC location, most recent, or EOF location equals this. So we can report it at the end of file, I guess. Then we break. But really, we should probably just return. Um, where did we return the EOF token? All the way up here. So we can set out token kind to EOF here as well before we return. So then we break out of the loop for both of these. And then if it's neither of these, well, we break out of one, we continue on the other. Otherwise, we vector push into current arg the token arg token. And that's our new set of arguments. And then once we're done parsing here, our token array, we create the expansion and we push the expansion. So if I go back to hello, before we invoke this, does this at least not crash? It's not dying. I see all the correct tokens keep getting my shirt stuck on my chair. I see everything correctly. So I'm going to say we're not crashing. It's probably good. And then if I include var, it's going to probably try to expand this. And we're going to get int and stuff. It's not. Oh, good. I forgot we already added that check. It's not being invoked. So then we can say var like this, and it should invoke it. 
and then we're going to say int a equals 10. Beautiful. Okay, so that's already better. And we want to say bar. Now it's going to probably consume bar. It is. So now bar is not being expanded at all. That's progress. It still looks correct. So now all we have to do is when we hit bar, move into, or when we hit a, move into expanding to bar. So now let's come up here to not that far up here. We've looked up the macro definition. We are hitting the macro expansion here. Whenever we hit a this, whenever we hit this, we've given the out token this whole thing here. Then we can say if out token um, is macro param, then we can say um, macro expansion arg index equals macro per, um, out token macro param index and then macro expansion arg position equals zero then 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 we can just do a return and call this stuff again like so um what we're doing down here of course is we're recursively calling ourselves somewhere right here i just wanted to make sure that we're doing the same thing so up here we want to return the next token again back into out token and we should probably be out token equals lycc token of zero every time we do this so that we're not like creating weird bugs with unallocated token memory so i mean like do we do this anywhere else those are the only two places so we're safe so then if we hit this we should hit the assertion not handling that just yet so then we can do something very similar here where we get the um, arg position, I believe is what we called it, right? Arg position. So arg position is macro expansion arg position. Then we can say the macro expansion that we're hitting here is um, args, not def, we want args sub arg index index sub arg position then we can do an arg position plus plus and then we can do if out token well not this if um, macro expansion arg position is greater than vector count of args sub macro expansion arg index then we can not pop the expansion just yet, but we can uh, set the these two things back to their default again. So zero and negative one. And then if it's a macro parameter, we don't want to return here. And we don't want to pop just yet. So we're going to grab this, and then we can say if this, then we can pop the macro expansions. So if we hit is macro param, I've got to refollow this because I think I changed something. We hit a macro expansion. In the case that we're not expanding an arg index, we hit the position. If it's a macro parameter, we start parsing that. Otherwise, we pop this. So actually, this should be going in here to indicate that we need to expand it, not down here. So then we can return from here. 
that's fine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that to be a little bit more clear that we're going immediately from here back. Then pop this if we hit it. Same thing up here. If we exit an argument parse, we wanna double check that we're out of a body as well. Um, and then what if I just do that? Assert fail, not handling, I didn't remove the assert. I int bar bar bar. Interesting. Well, we hit bar correctly. What? What? Why are we hitting bar bar bar? It's got the number of tokens correct. Int bar equals 10. It expanded bar. But then it just didn't do anything right. Hold on, if I print f here, make sure we're actually hitting that case properly. We're hitting it three times. If macro expansion arg position is greater than or equal to vector count, Arg index equals this. If arg index is greater than or equal to zero, maybe. I don't think that's going to change anything. Bar, bar, bar. Set it back to negative one. So what about here, the only other place we're modifying it. Are we hitting that multiple times? We are. Why are we hitting that multiple times? Body position. Zero, one, zero, one, two, three. Well, that's fine. Am I just not populating that correctly? This should only happen once. It only happens once. So we push the token, and then we don't reset it. <coughs> We're going to probably have to do that in a couple more places. Bar equals 10. OK. We did it. Did we do any more printing? No. OK. So that gives us the, some cool stuff. If I say uh, var2 that takes a v as a value, then we can say expand v for me. So then I can say var bar, and then in foo, a second foo, I could say var2 of bar and a random value like 69. And we can see if that works. Int bar equals 69. And it even put it in uh, parens for us. Cool. We've got a very simple preprocessor going for just defines. So let's go ahead and git status, make sure that we're, yep, git com, uh, add dot git commit for c um, add uh, macro expansion 
for macros with arguments. So I can just say add expansion for macros with arguments. Boom. Get push. Should already be tracking. Cool. How long did that take? That was almost an hour. Um, I don't think we're going to get include working in anywhere close to that amount of time. So this is probably going to have to be another separate episode and put include. I mean, I said we could probably have include use the same macro system. And I'm still going to try to do that, but I just don't see it being quick enough that I can do it right now. So I'm probably going to call this episode just at getting define working. Hopefully that was fun. Uh, and we'll do getting includes working in the next episode. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying so far. Let me know any anything I can improve, anything you want to see down in the comments below. Check the description for links to the discords, the playlist for this if you want to keep updated to that. Watch some old episodes. There's a playlist for all of these. Or the source code is available on my personal Gitty instance or on GitHub now. So you can go to either of those. Give me a star, follow, whatever you want. You can fork it. You can pull request me. If I start seeing pull requests come in, we can go over them in these episodes. Maybe sometime soon I start live streaming this process as well so we can do live code review and stuff. Whatever the hell we want to do. I've got a lot of ideas. I just need to see them happen. So again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.